Hello and welcome to another session of Let's Get Technical here at Hanover Architectural Files. My name is Lee Furman and this is Dusty Reed. And we're excited to bring you a three-part series of installation videos. In today's first installment, it's going to be talking about the sand setting bed application and how they relate to installing Hanover Architectural Files materials. Now due to PA weather, finds us inside today uh, in our, inside one of our local warehouses where we uh, constructed a demo site made out of our chopped stone garden wall and some of the materials that were basically made available to us for uh, today's demo purposes. Today's feature is that of sand setting beds and the installation of handle pressed pavers and pressed bricks. This is not incorporating the Hanover asphalt block, which will be covered in a subsequent uh, video called by tune the setting bed. So Dustin, there's a, there's a lot of times that we're always asked, why can't I just have to excavate out the top two, three inches and throw some sand down and pave? You know, it all relates back, folks, to the, the integration of the total system of the subgrade all the way through the tops of the pavers and edge restraints of how everything interacts and uh, is joined together and it works together as a system. As well as this is one of the most cost effective measures to install pavers anywhere across the United States. So without further ado, let's dive into this, uh, this, uh, this detail. You wanna talk about the uh, subgrade? Sure, thanks Lee. Uh, before I start, I think it is worth noting that in any construction project, proper permits and clearances shall be obtained uh, before the first shovel hits the ground. So to start, we're going to pull up a detail here, and this is our sand setting bed installation guideline. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see the compact subgrade, and that's what I'll be speaking on right now. Now, the subgrade is essentially the foundation to your paper project. Any deflection in this will be reflected on your top surface. So, now when prepping your subgrade, uh, your first step is deciding on your excavation length, width, and depth. Now, the depth is going to be determined based upon whether your application is subject to either pedestrian or vehicular traffic. Now, once the soils are excavated to the desired depth, um, you're ready for compaction. And what you'll, what you'll be using is either a roller or what we have here, a heavy vibrating plate compactor. Now once compaction is complete, if you are noticing any contaminated soils, uh, we recommend that you reach out to a um, geotech engineer and they'll, they'll be able to help rectify any issue that you are experiencing. When you talk about uh, contaminated soils, what, what uh, kind of contaminated soils, I mean, which are you looking for? Sure, so what you find there is you find like either sandy soils, um, loose sediments, and even clay. Right. Yeah. So go ahead and reach out to that uh, engineer and they can help solidify and firm up that subgrade. Absolutely, first. absolutely. So if your soils are intact, um, you want to assure that you have proper density compaction. Now this is key for long-term success. Um, I did forget to mention when excavating, uh, we recommend you excavate a good six inches to a foot out of the intended paved area. Uh, this will allow for um, proper edge restraints once the bricks and pavers have been installed. So Lee and I don't have much time today, um, but I do want to stress, and I'm sure Lee's going to reiterate this um, as we go along, but um, be sure that your, your base, your subgrade, and your sub-base have proper compaction. Um, if not, um, you're susceptible to deformation down the road. So I'll let Lee get into the sub-base. And the sub-base now, you know, now you're going to put that stone material in there, and you can obtain that stone at really at any local quarry or landscape supply store. The stone should be a good road-based material. This is, uh, the road-based uh, that your DOT suggests and recommends underneath every uh, road in the, uh, in the county and state where you, uh, where you live. But the, the stone being three-quarter inch stone down the fines and screenings, it's placed into the uh, desired depth depending on the application, whether it be pedestrian and or vehicular like Dusty alluded to. Once compacted, You'll have a nice, uh, dense surface, okay? Uh, spend time on this application, get your proper slope so that you get that water that's gonna run off that surface of the paver. This is where uh, all that slope is achieved, is in the base type material. Uh, proper moisture content within the stone, that will ensure and help uh, get that proper density that uh, Dusty alluded to. 
Again, this is the backbone of the application and installation of your, of your system and the longevity of the application that's achieved within your subgrade and sub base type materials. So spend time, get this right, and put this base material in lifts. Okay, we suggest two to three inch lifts um, for a residential application, like a patio, driveways, maybe six to eight inches. And for commercial applications, uh, we would highly suggest maybe contacting your local uh, architect or engineer to get uh, their viewpoint of what that uh, depth should be. You may have to increase that maybe 8, 10, 12 inches, or a concrete slab may, uh, may need to be integrated at that moment in time. But again, compact and lifts is very critical in this application. You don't want to come back in and put all six inches of uh, stone in and compact with your plate compactor because not all compactors are created equal. Don't use a light duty compactor. Concentrate on your base material on a heavier compactor that's going to transmit heavier and more transceptical force. So now that you've got your base in, we're ready to start seeing sand. Yep. Yeah, so once the base is compacted, uh, what you want to do is you want to grab your three quarter inch screed bars which you have here and your screed board. Um, you will then place the screed, screed bars to the inside width of your screed bar. And at this point, you're ready to start wheel bearing in sand. I do want to make mention that this sand is not a mason sand, nor is it a limestone screening. It is a concrete sand that conforms to ASTM C33. It is a wash coarse angular sand that creates bit friction between the pavers and also between the paver joints when locked into place once camping is finished. Now, so you have your sand. What you want to do is you want to screed back. And when you're screeding back, um, when you get to your termination point, make sure you screed past. Um, this will allow for an overlay in brick, which uh, will give you the ability to make cuts. Um, also, ins install border units and uh, edge retreat, which we have here. Um, once the sand is full, uh, you'll pull your screed bars. And as you see, um, there is a cavity. What you want to do is you want to feather in sand and level out. At this point, you're ready to lay brick for favors. And I'll let me get into that. So now, once you achieve uh, a fluff coat of sand, okay, so that's what you got, an undisturbed fluff coat, and in a day's time frame, only street out what you're going to cover in bricks in that particular day. Uh, in selection of the concrete pavers, make sure you select a good quality uh, concrete paver conforming to ASDM 936 in whatever color and, and or pattern that you desire. You pick your starting point, once you pick your starting point, you start laying your pavers down, in accordance to your pattern that you have desired and, and developed. And you always will lay over top of pavers that are laid. What I mean by that is you work over top of them and then you continue until you get to your termination point. Once you get to your termination point, you can lay in your borders, come in with your cuts, okay? So you use your masonry saw with a diamond blade, perform your cuts. Uh, you're ready to edge or you lay up to what we have our chapter seven garden wall here. Once it's all complete, lay it in, now you're ready for your plate compaction. We use a lighter weight, uh, lighter duty compactor. All this is designed to do is just kind of tamp the pavers into the sand setting bed. And that first compaction, what that will do is create a surcharge of sand up through the paver joints. And as Gus alluded to earlier, that's where that, that friction starts to take place on the bottom side. So you get the paver set on the first compaction, and then you come back in and you can install your, your jointing sand, whether it be a polymeric sand or just a, a typical sand that you want. Um, you're looking just to fill those joints all the way to, as you're vibrating. You're also sweeping behind, making sure those joints are completely filled. And this is where a true interlocking system takes place, where you've got the integration of your subgrade, your sub base, choking into one another, as well as now your sand and your pavers interfacing. Now, from there, sweep off the excess sand, and you're ready to enjoy. There is no downtime. So, we, uh, we really hope that you were able to gain some practical knowledge today and just the, the general installation guidelines. Uh, if you have any questions about today's uh, talk, please feel free to email them to letsgettech at handoverpavers.com. Or more importantly, give any one of our technical folks a call. We'd be happy to, to discuss your project and creating that next project of distinction. Yeah, and please uh, join us in two weeks 
as Larry Jackson and Matt Yingley heat things up. Uh, they'll be discussing our preferred installation method, that of the bituminous setting. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in and have a great day. Thank you.